when you check your calendars from time to time, you notice that there are significant events listed in those calendars, like Veterans Day, or Memorial Day, or Labor Day, Independence Day. And there, there are many more. And of course, your birthday is listed on that calendar. Isn't that right? We take time to celebrate significant events in the history of our country. Days that help us remember what happened in the past, so hopefully we won't make the same mistakes in the future. In Exodus chapter 12, God is marking his calendar at a far more grand scale than we can ever imagine. He changed the calendar of the Israelites invited them to begin celebrating the Passover. He told Moses and Aaron that there would be a new calendar. It would be the sign of new beginnings. And at the beginning of the year, he, the people would remember God's great act of salvation. They celebrated that God came first in their lives and that God was central to everything that they would do. And that change in the calendar points toward our transformation. God calls us to keep Him at the center of our lives. And so He gives instruction in chapter 12. The first part of chapter 12 is instruction He gives to Aaron and Moses. And then verses 21 through 23 is instruction that Moses repeats to, his, to the elders. So if you follow with me in verse 21, it says, Then Moses, Exodus 12, verse 21, Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and told them, Go and select for yourselves a lamb or young goat for your families and kill the Passover animal. Take a branch of hyssop, dip it in the blood, that is in the basin, apply it to the top of the door frame and the two side posts, some of the blood that is in the basin. Not one of you is to go out the door of his house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike Egypt, and when he sees the blood on the top of the door frame and the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door, and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and to strike you. So they were to take a lamb on the tenth day of the month from each household or for as many people that were in that house that night. And the lamb served as a substitute. <coughs> it was only acceptable if it were a year old, a male, and without blemish. It was selected on the 10th day and kept on the 14th day. And the qualifications were very important. Because in Deuteronomy 17.1, God says that to use a blemished animal for sacrifice would be an abomination. God is telling Israel that they would need and would receive a perfect substitute, a perfect sacrifice. And that reminds us of our own situation. We are corrupted by the influence of sin, by the effects of sin, and we cannot save ourselves. Our good works are like that blemished lamb. They're an abomination to God. We need one who serves as a substitute on our behalf. Yes. Jesus is the lamb for the house of God. Only through faith in Him are our sins washed away. In verses 6 through 7, we see what happens to the unblemished lamb. It was killed at twilight. The slain lamb vividly reminded everyone that all deserve judgment because all have sinned. And consequently, a blameless life had to be sacrificed in place of the guilty to provide for us salvation. The blood of the lamb was applied on the doorposts. 
Notice verse 7 of chapter 12. They will take some of the blood and put it on the two side posts and the top door frame of the houses where they will eat. And the obedience of placing the blood on the doorpost showed the person that they believed that God was about to perform an unbelievable miracle to strike Egypt in a way it could not imagine. So Israel, Israel escaped the judgment through this sacrifice, through this gift of salvation that was accomplished by the sacrificial lamb. Verses 8 through 11, God gives instruction on how they are to serve and eat the lamb. It was to be eaten with unleavened bread. And the use of unleavened bread and the instruction on what kind of clothing to wear indicated that they were dressed and ready to move. They needed to be dressed and ready. They were about to experience crossing over the Jordan River. It's a reminder to us that we too need to be dressed and to be ready when Jesus Christ comes to the cause of glory. We can't wait until then to get ready. We need to be ready today. In addition, they ate bitter herbs as a reminder of the bitter experience that they had in Egypt. The Passover would serve as a reminder of their time and escape from Egyptian bondage. Likewise, we are reminded of our bitter experience. We're reminded of our slavery and our addiction to, to sin. Now, there are many who do not praise God because they underestimate the danger of sin. But remember what God has done for you. He has delivered us from slavery. He has made us free in Christ. In verses 12 and 13, or 12 through 14, what Ricky, what, what Marty meant for us, excuse me, is that transition from slavery to freedom. God was about to act decisively against the nation of Egypt. And while some had already been judged, that night all would be judged. In his mighty judgment, God signaled that he is the real king. That Yahweh is to be feared, not the Pharaoh. And only the Lord is the true and righteous judge, and he would make himself known. Yes. The acts that took place on the Passover night are a reminder to us how powerful God is and how helpless the false gods of Egypt were. It's also important to recognize the sign of imagery in verse 13. Verse 13 says, The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, so that when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And this plague will not fall on you to destroy you when I attack the land of Egypt. The blood on their doorpost served as a sign that judgment had already fallen on the house of Israel. And just as the plagues were a sign of Egypt, were a sign to Egypt of God's judgment, now the Passover was a sign to Israel. A sign that God was still faithful to, to his promise that he made in Genesis 3.15. The promises that he had made to Abraham. In the midst of a looming judgment, God provided for the seed of the woman. He protected Israel from slavery and from death for future salvation. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No plague will be among you. you no plague will be among you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. God accepted the blood of the sacrifice and he passed over and spared their lives. And simply those of us who have been born again through Christ, God sees Christ's blood in us and He passes over us. He forgives our trespasses and He sees not our blemished, but He sees Christ's righteousness. 
What an amazing God we serve. God would make a distinction with Israel, but that was not to say that Israel was innocent. Israel was not innocent based on its bloodline. Not innocent based on its heritage. They were found innocent because of the blood of the Lamb. Because of the perfect substitute. God judged Egypt, but he also judged Israel. The Passover demonstrated that apart from the blood of the Lamb, Israel would be found guilty. Because God is holy. And because we are sinners and cannot stand in the presence of the holy God, we are clothed with Christ's righteousness and clothed with Christ's blood. We are all like Pharaoh. We may not have his title, but we're all sinners standing in the need of righteousness. And although Israel had been protected from all the other plagues, this last plague, God called for their faithfulness. He called for them to put the blood on the doorposts and the sideposts and that he would pass over them. The Apostle Paul puts it this way, by faith he instituted the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch the Israelites. Blood represents life, and without it, we experience eternal death. Righteousness is the lifeblood we need in order to have a relationship with our Heavenly Fathers. Because we cannot rely on our righteousness. And where does righteousness come from? Freely from Jesus Christ. The Passover reminds us that we have been delivered from death by a perfect substitute whose blood was shed as a sacrifice for our sins. And this, this theme runs from the entire book of Exodus. By remembering God and who he is and what he had done, they gave him praise and obedience. And this morning we do the same as we honor him in the communion service. So this morning, we're going to slip away. Donald, the fellowship hall is for the men. And then the, is it the green door? The, the blue door is for the ladies. That will be out this door and down to the right. And then the first door, the red door, is for either couples or families. We practice open communion. So if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you're welcome to participate in this. If you don't feel that you're Prepare today, you're welcome to remain here while we go to the community service.